When you see two to the three, you know exactly what to do. You multiply the base two by itself three times and you get eight. But what about this one? What is two to the negative three? Does that minus sign make the answer negative? It's tempting to look at this problem and immediately think that the answer is negative eight. It's an easy mistake to make, but the actual answer is a fraction, not a negative number. Negative exponents all come down to one simple rule. First, I'll show you what a negative exponent is actually telling you to do, and then prove why the rule works. From there, we'll jump into practice problems, starting with easy warmups and quickly moving to combining exponent rules and then tougher examples with parentheses and roots. A negative exponent is an instruction. It tells us flip it upside down. So if we have that two to the negative three, it tells us flip it upside down like this and make it two to the positive three. Put it on the bottom of the fraction and change the sign on the exponent. Another way to say that mathematically would be move it to the other side of the fraction bar or take the reciprocal. Meaning that whenever we see a negative exponent, we want to think about it like an instruction or like a directive to move the base and its negative exponent to the other side of the fraction bar. But why is that actually the case? How do we really know that a negative exponent is telling us to do that? Well, we can prove this to ourselves if we look at the pattern that starts with positive exponents. Let's think about two to the positive three. We know that that's equal to two times two times two. Now let's think about what happens when we wanna step down the exponent by one. So instead of two cubed, we wanna find two squared. Well, one way we could get to two squared from here is by dividing through by two. So think about here, two squared, we could write as two cubed, two times two times two, but then divided by one factor of two. When we write it this way, we see that we get one factor of two to cancel from both the numerator and the denominator, leaving us with just two factors of two or two times two or two squared. It's kind of silly to write two squared this way with these extra factors of two, but what we're doing here is establishing a pattern. So using this pattern, if we wanna step the exponent down one more and write two to the first, we could write it this way. So two to the first, we could say is two times two times two divided by two factors of two. Then we get two factors of two to cancel from both the numerator and denominator, leaving us with just the single factor or two to the first power. And here's where the pattern starts to prove our point about negative exponents. If we write two to the zero, you can see that what we're doing is dividing by one additional factor of two each time we step down the exponent. So here we divided by zero factors of two. Here we divided by one factor of two, two factors of two. Now we have three factors of two in the denominator. And the result of this fraction when all the factors cancel is one. If we keep adding another factor of two to the denominator, that means that two to the negative one, when we step down this exponent again, has to have four factors of two in the denominator. We'll cancel three factors of two in the numerator with three factors of two in the denominator. And all we're left with is one divided by this single factor of two in the denominator or two to the first power. And what we see then is that two to the negative one has to be equal to one over two to the positive one. And that's the reciprocal rule for negative exponents that we just defined. And here we're proving it to ourselves by establishing this pattern. So then you can see that to get two to the negative two, stepping down the exponent one more, we need to add one more factor of two to the denominator. So two to the negative two keeps that two cubed in the numerator we've been using, but puts five factors of two in the denominator then cancels three factors from both the numerator and denominator, leaving us with two factors in the denominator, therefore allowing us to say that two to the negative two has to be equal to one divided by two to the positive two. In other words, using this pattern lets us prove to ourselves that when we see a negative exponent, it's mathematically correct to take the reciprocal and change the sign on that exponent from negative to positive. So if that's the instruction given to us by a negative exponent, and we've proven to ourselves using that pattern that that instruction does in fact work, now we can move forward working with negative exponents, but we're still gonna run into a bunch of questions about how to apply them in different scenarios. We're gonna go through those now, and then we're gonna get to a really big challenge problem at the end that at first will look really difficult, but at that point, we'll actually be fully equipped to solve it. So the first problem we run into with negative exponents, what do we do when the base is a fraction? We have negative exponents here, but how do we handle a fractional base? Well, the rule here 
is that the fractional base flips upside down and the exponent changes from negative to positive. So we flip the fraction from 1 over 2 to 2 over 1, took the reciprocal, and changed the exponent from negative to positive. The reason is because we can think about this in intermediate steps. Using the same take the reciprocal rule that we did before, when we define negative exponents, we could rewrite this as 1 divided by, and then this 1 half here, 1 half, that whole thing, to the positive 3. We know that this turns into this, but then we can apply this 3 to this numerator and denominator separately, meaning we can rewrite this as 1 divided by 1 to the 3 over 2 to the 3, and then we know that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this, instead of 1 divided by 1 cubed over 2 cubed, is going to be equal to 1 multiplied by 2 cubed over 1 cubed, Multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of anything. And then 2 cubed over 1 cubed can be written as 2 over 1 quantity cubed, pulling the exponent outside the parentheses. That's how we use three intermediate steps to get from here to here. But going forward, we know that we can just flip the fractional base, take its reciprocal, and change the exponent from negative to positive. OK, so we have a solution there. But what about if the base is a variable? Does that change anything? No, it doesn't change anything at all. We still just take the reciprocal. The negative exponent gives us that same instruction. Take the reciprocal. So 1 divided by x to the positive 3 is the same as x to the negative 3. This is a different one, though. What happens if the negative exponent is in the denominator instead of in the numerator? Well, the instruction is still the same. That negative exponent directs you to take the reciprocal. So instead of moving this term from the numerator to the denominator, as we've been doing, when we take the reciprocal and it's already in the denominator, that just means we move it from the denominator to the numerator. This coefficient of 5 is going to stay right where it is. And this x to the negative 3 moves up to the numerator. And we can rewrite 5 over x to the negative 3 as 5x to the positive 3. Now, you might be wondering, what happens to the denominator? What's left over? Well, if we think about this x to the negative 3 as being multiplied by an invisible 1, that invisible 1 stays in the denominator. But of course, dividing by 1 doesn't ever change the value of anything, which means we can simplify it out and just write the result as 5x to the positive 3. So we've actually expanded our understanding a little bit of negative exponents and that instruction to flip it upside down or take the reciprocal. When we see that negative exponent in the numerator, we know to move it to the denominator. Now we know that when we see it in the denominator, we have to move it to the numerator. Now, though, things start to get a little complicated. What do we do when we have to start combining negative exponents with other exponent rules? So we know this exponent rule already, the product rule for exponents, which tells us that when we multiply terms with like bases, we have to add the exponents. So x squared times x to the fifth, we know is x to the 2 plus 5, which we could say is x to the 7. What happens when we introduce a negative exponent here? Well, actually, nothing really changes. If we had, let's say, a positive 2 here for an exponent, but a negative 5 here for this exponent, the rule is still the same. We still add those exponents. So here we'd say 2 plus and then a negative 5 or 2 minus 5, and the resulting exponent would be negative 3. That product rule for exponents still holds. What about when we have quotient rule? We know that when we divide terms with like bases, we subtract the exponents. So x to the fifth divided by x squared is x to the 5 minus 2, what happens when we have a negative exponent? Well, let's say this 5 here is actually instead a negative 3. The rule stays exactly the same. So instead of this positive 5 here, we'd have negative 3. Or negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5. And the result here would be negative 5. And in fact, Negative exponents don't affect the power rule for exponents either. When we have the power of a power, something like x squared, and then that whole thing raised to the fifth power, the rule tells us to multiply those exponents. So we get x to the 2 times 5, or x to the 10. Well, let's say this 5 was negative, so negative 5 here. We would have 2 times negative 5, and the result then would be x to the negative 10. If we have the power of a product, so we have the product 2 times x, and then we've raised that whole thing to the power of 3. We know we can distribute that exponent across the 2 and the x individually. 
So this simplifies to two to the three times x to the three. We know two cubed is eight, so we can write that as eight x cubed. Well, if instead this was negative three, the rule still holds. We can distribute that negative exponent across each factor in the product. So the result here then is two to the negative three times x to the negative three. And then instead of eight, we know this two to the negative three is one over two to the positive three or one over eight. And we know x to the negative three is one over x to the positive three. So we put this in the denominator as well, and the result is one over eight x cubed instead of eight x cubed. And this also works when we have the power of a quotient. This rule tells us that we can distribute this exponent across the numerator and the denominator. So two over x, all raised to the third power, is equivalent to two to the third over x to the third, or eight over x cubed, if this exponent is negative, we can still distribute it across the quotient and write this as two to the negative three over x to the negative three. And then up here in the numerator, instead of two cubed, we end up with one over two cubed. So one over two cubed. And in the denominator, instead of x cubed, x to the negative three tells us that we end up with one over x to the positive three. Then instead of dividing by one over x cubed, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal x cubed over one. And so the result here then is x cubed over two cubed or over eight. And we see that instead of eight over x cubed, we end up with x cubed over eight. And that matches what we looked at before when we talked about having a fractional base raised to a negative exponent. We said that we flipped the fraction upside down and changed the exponent from negative to positive. So two over x all raised to the power of negative three is the same as x over two all raised to the power of positive three or x cubed over eight. Now we started to look at this a little bit, but let's dig in deeper on parentheses. What do we do when we have something like this, an expression with negative exponents? We have parentheses applied here. Well, again, just always go back to the instruction that a negative exponent tells you to take the reciprocal or flip it over the fraction bar. X to the negative one, we can rewrite as one over X to the positive one or just one over X, which means we end up with two Y cubed all over X. Then remember that this negative exponent outside the parentheses tell us that we can flip the fractional base and make the exponent positive. So instead of two Y cubed over X, we'll have X over two Y cubed all raised to the power of positive two. If we want, we can leave the expression this way because we've eliminated all negative exponents or we could choose to apply this exponent to the numerator and denominator individually. And the result there, if we did that, would be x squared over four y to the six. Now the last issue that we wanna tackle is what to do with negative exponents when they're mixed with square roots or just roots in general. Remember that the square root of x is the same thing as x to the one half. This is two different ways of writing the same thing. If we have the third root of x, that's the same as x to the one third. That's a quick little review of roots. What happens though, when we have something like this, x to the negative four inside of a root? Well, when that's the case, we wanna use what we know about roots here to rewrite this. So instead of writing the square root of x to the negative four, we wanna take away the square root and rewrite this with the exponent of one half. And now we can use our power of a power rule that we looked at earlier to multiply these exponents. So negative four times one half is a negative two. And now we've simplified enough to see that all that's left to do is follow the instruction given by this negative exponent to move the x to the negative two to the numerator and rewrite it as x to the positive two. If this video helped clear things up, a subscribe is a massive help to my channel. And for my full step-by-step -step math courses, you can always find me at kristakingmath.com. Thanks for learning with me, and I'll see you in the next video.